Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to go over an I squared C scanner. Part of the reason that I started this video series was to cover some issues that I had problems with and then to document them so I could go back through and have a record of what I did in case I needed a review. Because you forget things after a couple months and it's nice to be able to go back on things. When I picked up the I squared C chip, I thought, hey, I'll just make a quick video on it. I'm not going to worry too much about it. It should be pretty simple. I'm going to use one of the libraries and just do it that way. Well, the library gave me a lot of problems. I ended up spending about three hours chasing my tail. I gave up for the night, came back the next day, and everything seemed to work fine. But I decided to go back and start from the beginning on this and just learn a little bit myself too. So the first thing I did was I just wrote a simple scanner because the way the I squared C works is every chip comes with an address and then you can do a little manipulation on the chip itself to change the address but you're pretty much stuck with the address it comes from comes with and some documentation is correct and some isn't and that's what I ran into so this scanner really helped with that so the only library I'm going to use is the wire.h1 so I include that here and then to get it started you just have this command wire.begin don't forget this because that can cause you some headaches too and then I'm going to have serial begin so I can send some data out the serial port just to just to show some information. It has nothing to do with the I squared C itself. When you send data on the I squared C bus, you're going to get something back that's going to let you know whether it worked or not. And we're going to call that the reply code. And then we're going to have a device address because we're going to scan every address that could possibly be on the on the I squared C bus. And we're going to just start that with one. I'm going to use an UNO, so A5 is SCL and A4 is SDA. It's interesting, the UNO doesn't have it labeled on the board itself, but I have an off-brand Mega and it does have it labeled, so I thought that was kind of strange. But I put this as a note for myself so I know which pins to connect. And then I just simply loop through every address between 1 and 127. Actually, I don't check 127, I should have it 128. Just notice that as I'm recording right now. Then I'm just going to increment it. And then you simply, we're not going to send anything to it, so we're just going to see if there's a device there. Um, we're going to begin transmission, wired up, begin transmission, and then we just put the device address. It's pretty simple. And then you end the transmission. When you end the transmission, you get a code. And the codes can mean different things. And if you get a zero, that means it was successful. Everything I see is either a 0 or a 4 uh, or a 2. These are the three that I have seen, 0, 2, or 4. So based upon that reply code, we're going to do a couple different things down here. But we're going to print the device and the address of it. So 1 through 127. And then we're just going to print the reply code. But if the reply code is a 0, we're going to print a bunch of asterisks so we can find it easily else we're not going to print any asterisks, but we still want to see the information. And then when we're all done, since it's going to scan through this every every 10 seconds, even though I have five over here, every time, every 10 seconds we'll print this line with some lines in between it so that we can see that we're paused and that we're on a different set of data. I'm going to send this up. Right now I have a device on there. I can't remember exactly what address it will find. But I'll send this up and start the serial monitor so we can see what's going on. And you can see that the two lines went up there. I'm going to stop the auto scroll. And here are my two where I get zeros. And it's address 80 and 88. And you get two addresses for each device that I've connected so far. Once we get into actually using the devices, we'll make that a little bit clearer. But we know that we have two addresses that we can send data to that are on the address or on the I squared C bus. One of the problems I was having that time was my address was in the documentation said it should have been 83, but it ended up being 82 or 76 or it was just wrong. And by just running this real quick or having this in your library of tools, you can find an address pretty quick. It's kind of nice. I'm going to go back and make an adjustment to the code so it doesn't print these other ones. We're going, to mat, we're going to comment this out so this doesn't get printed. And then we're going to copy it. 
we're just going to replace this with them. So in other words, if reply code is equal to zero, it's going to print this. And we'll comment this out too. In the shorthand, if you're not familiar with this, normally after an if statement, you would put curly braces here. And then after, and you put whatever in the curly braces. But what's nice, if you only have one command after the if statement, you don't need the curly braces. But we'll leave that for now. I'm going to do a compile. Here's where if I've done something wrong, the editor will let me know. Well, it looks like I got it. Now let's send it up. And the only time we should get output is when it is zero. I didn't I should have done print line instead of print but we're getting device 80 reply code 0 and then device 88 reply code 0 and we'll get that over and over and the reason I did this is because on the device itself and I'll have the editor put a picture in right about now you can see that there are switches or in some cases solder pads that you have to connect together to give different addresses in this case I'm using one with switches and so I'm going to adjust the switches and we'll see that these numbers should change based upon the switches. What's strange with this one though is I have four switches. I was kind of under the impression I squared C for the most part would only have three, which then would give you eight different addresses to use. Change this to print line. And I'm going to work through the switches. I'm going to switch switch number one first. And what I did is I unhooked the power when I switched that switch. I'm not 100% sure you have to do that, but I did. And you can see it went from 80 to 81. It was 80 and 88, now it's 81 and 89. Now I'm going to flip that switch back and flip up switch number two. This time I'm just going to do it on the fly and see what happens. Now, and you can see it went back to 80. That was switching it off. Now we're going to switch two on. And then it went up to 82. Now we're going to go up to 3. Strange. I set this one, I would have expected to be 84. I set switch 1 and 2 back to 0. And I set switch 3 to 1. And it didn't seem to have any effect. I'm going to switch it back. Just to make sure I didn't break anything, I'll switch one up. Nope, oh, and 81, so switch three has no effect. Now I've switched one back and switched switch four up, and it didn't make any change either. So it appears switch four doesn't really do anything either. Chip that I'm using is a double EEPROM and I haven't really read the data sheet on it, so I'm not 100% sure what those switches do, but it looks like the first two switches will give me different addresses. And that way, if I had multiple um, circuits that I wanted to use on the bus, I could have different switches. So that's kind of nice. I'm going to go back to the code again. The main reason for this tutorial, though, is just to go over how you can take a device that doesn't matter what it is. If it's got I squared C capabilities, you should be able to run this circuit on it and it will, or run this program on it, and it will give you the address of the device that you're using. And then you, then after that, you need to look at the data sheet itself and, uh, and determine how to use that particular device. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.